Good morning. My name is Grace Claire, and last summer I decided to complete my BRVS senior project on sexuality education in American high schools. Um, I really believe in the meaning behind my quote of quality and the relevance it holds to my subject. Um, information moves so fast nowadays and it changes so often. So why hasn't our method of teaching our children changed since the Industrial Revolution? And so with this in mind, um, well, this especially um, extends to our method of teaching sexuality education. And with this in mind, I developed my research que question. Um, what is the significance of sexuality education in an American high school setting, and how is it best taught? So what is significance? How is sexuality education important? Um, to my students in the audience, how often do you guys pay attention in sex ed? And to my adults in the audience, how much do you remember from that class? From this, we wouldn't think it was very important, but maybe we're just not treating it like it is. It's a pretty big number. Um, this is the number of unintended pregnancies in 2011. 45% of pregnancies in that year were not intentional. This was the same year that Apple came out with the iPhone 4S, just to give you guys some context. So why is so much progress being made in technology and family planning being put to the back burner? Another big number, but this time, this is the number of S this is the estimated number of Americans in 2017 who are living with an STD. Um, this these two issues are being put on the back burner in America, and um, it's mostly because we don't actually have a standard for sexuality education throughout the nation, um, and a lot of places aren't being taught sexuality education at all. And so that's why I wanted to focus my internship, my, communi my community service, and my research on. Um, there is a sensible solution to this, um, and I figured this out somewhat early. Um, the connection between information to education to prevention. Basically, now hear me out, more information leads to a better education leads to actual prevention. It was crazy. So out of all the models that I came across in my research, I decided that a comprehensive model of sexuality education would be the best to implement throughout the nation in order to prevent unintended, unintended pregnancies, STDs, sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and all other um, topics that are included in sexuality education. And I decided to bring my internship, which was at Planned Parenthood in Charlottesville. Um, I interned with Ashley Farmer and Takiya Vaughn. With Ashley Farmer, I um, focused on more of the political aspect of Planned Parenthood services. And she basically showed me the ropes on um, what she does every time there's an election going on um, or about to go on. We went around Charlottesville areas and we canvassed, which is basically where you go up to strangers' doors, you knock on them, you give them your pitch for your um, nominee that you support and why you support them. And then you're like, go out and vote. And it is so nerve wracking. <laughs> um, but that was Ashley Farmer. And then I also phone banked in the math conference room. Actually, I would just take out my cell phone. I had a list of names on this program and I would just go through the numbers and I would go through a script. And then sometimes I'd go off the script and I'd tell them why I personally supported this candidate and why I wanted them to be elected. And I'm actually really proud and really, really happy to um, say that our um, nominee for gubernatorial, um, the guben gubernatorial election um, actually was elected this past November. And so I was really proud. I felt like I was part of that from this. And um, for my internship with Takiya Vaughn, she actually really helped me um, in the research aspect and the community service aspect of my project as well. She told me topics I should focus on when researching this and um, what I could look into the different kinds of um, organizations that support the different organizations that are against and why they are that way. Um, and she helped me with my community service a lot, which my other mentor, Miss Vicki Crawford, um, a ninth grade health teacher at this very school. Um, I did a two day presentation to three different 
ninth grade health classes. <sighs> ninth grade health classes. Um, it actually went a lot better than you'd expect. Uh, they were very, very respectful, and they listened to my entire presentation, which was about the different units within um, the CECUS, uh Comprehensive Sexuality Education um, um, format. And I briefly went over all of these, and I focused on a few because my time was limited. CECUS, I'm sorry, CECUS stands for Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States, just to give you guys some context. Um, but I went through all of these and focused on a few, and at the end of my presentation, I um, gave the students a survey, and I found that out of all of them, they found that um, my information on contraception, which was done the second day, they found that to be the most helpful, and they would want to hear that again, or they would have wanted to hear that again. But then I found that my um, talk on abstinence was the second most um, appreciated one, which I found to be somewhat um, surprising only because of what I've seen in um, media, what I've heard from um, friends and other conversations. So I was kind of surprised by that. And I was thinking maybe it's because they're in ninth grade. Maybe it's because they're younger. So I decided to also survey a um, senior, the senior class um, through an email um, on which ones, if they were to learn sex ed again, which topics would they want to focus on? And I actually found similar results in this too. Um, sexual health, which focuses on um, contraception, sexual abuse, and um, even goes into abortion in some um, programs. They actually would like to hear the most wanted to hear from that. But then second came sexual behavior in which abstinence is discussed. So it was still a similar kind of ratio. And um, I do feel like um, in my presentation, I stressed abstinence a lot and maybe that could have skewed the results. So in the future, I would um, like to focus on my presentation a little bit more and do a little bit more planning before presenting it to another group, and then maybe do a preliminary um, survey and then another survey at the end. What I learned about myself, this is me and my mentor canvassing. We were actually having a lot of fun that day. It was really nice outside. Um, new experiences are not necessarily bad experiences. They can be really scary, trust me. Um, but I found out that I'm a lot more confident in myself now that I have gone up to strangers' doors, knocked on them, and told them that I am like, I'm pro-reproductive rights, and here's a person I want you to vote for. Um, it was scary, and a lot of the time I, I hid behind my mentor and let her do all the talking. But then I started doing the talking with her behind me, and then I started going up to doors on my own, and I found that that personal growth was what I want in my life. I want to constantly be growing past limitations that I thought I once had. So, um, and there's always more to learn. As I was giving my presentation to these ninth graders, at the end of every single presentation, I'd go over to my mentor, Tiki Yvon, and she would be like, you should mention this next time. Or, did you know this? Um, and then I'd be like, no, I didn't know that. And so I'd be getting new information, and then the next class I'd be presenting that new information. So there's always more to learn in every single one of your topics. If you want to go deeper and learn more, there's always more for you guys to learn. This May, May 25th, I, along with my classmates, will be graduating from Nelson County High School. And I'm really, really excited to show everyone who's helped me get here all that I can do. Um, because next year, I'm hoping to either go to Virginia Tech, Penn State, or the University of Virginia. Um, I've been accepted into Penn State. I hear from University of Virginia April 1st, and I hear from Tech today. So I'm not sweating or anything, um, but I'm really, really excited. I um, wanted to explore a technology rather than a social aspect. Since I have um, done this project, I've decided that while I do excel in um, positions where I speak to people and where I can like convey my opinions and talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, I also want to learn more about technology. So I've decided to um, apply to Virginia Tech, their Explore Technology program, which is like an undergrad, like undecided sort of technology thing. Um, and then I applied to University of Virginia's engineering school, which is tough, but I'm trying. Um, dear future BRVGS seniors, hey, you guys. 
I'm really, really excited that you guys are going to be doing this this year. Um, and my piece of advice to you guys is don't get scared. Listen to all these people's advice because it's really, really important. But don't psych yourself out because then you're going to get stuck. And when you get stuck on a topic or an idea or a plan or a course of action and then something goes wrong, everything falls apart. You have to be really like dynamic and quick on your feet because your idea is not going to stay the same throughout your entire project. It's going to change massively. This time last year, I was planning on um, doing my project on biophotovoltaics. So it's a pretty big switch from there. Um, but just, just be open to change because it will make it so much easier on you when things may not go the way that you're expecting. All right, um, that's my presentation. Thank you guys. Are there any questions? Um, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I meant to actually mention that and I forgot. Um, like Timmy, a lot of mine was um, to originally leave that lasting impression on the students and kind of say, hey, if someone closer to my age thinks that this is important, maybe like I should think it's important too and kind of bring a little bit more relevance to the younger students. But then also, I realized that throughout the program, I actually have connected um, the Planned Parenthood in Charlottesville to our school kind of in a way and maybe be in the future, um, Takia would like to come down and do a presentation herself to the future um, health classes because I know that uh, Ms. Crawford has had people present in, in the past and that students have really responded to that. And so I have um, actually created that, that connection between those two, um, the school and the organization, and hopefully that will continue in the future. That's a great question. And um, I was hoping to do that with my project a little bit by opening up the conversation. Um, and maybe if I go out here and present about sexual education in front of an entire group of people, that maybe those people will go on and say, hey, I saw this really cool presentation about this. And then that starts a conversation. And then maybe that will start a conversation. And so it's all about starting conversations in this, because so many people for so long have felt just awkward and like uncomfortable discussing this thing that we have so our nation has so many issues with because we're ignoring it um, and because we're kind of sweeping it to the back because we're uncomfortable talking about it. So if we can just open that dialogue, I feel like so many issues could be resolved. Thank you. Um, I went to talk to Ms. Crawford about um, what, um, what topics she would be okay with me discussing in her class, first of all, just to create that respect because I didn't want to step on her toes or anything. And then she told me that um, she was actually going to be starting a discussion into these certain things and that she would hand over a few topics to me and then continue the class on from there. Um, so I planned with Ms. Crawford first, and then I went to um, Ms. Vaughn, to Kia Vaughn, and um, told her which topics I would be kind of stepping in to take over. And then she helped me um, from there to, dis to dis um, figure out which um, parts of this topic I should speak about to the class and how I should do it and how I should pre present it. And then she went over my presentation too. Um, and you can find that on my website, uh, along with the survey um, results. They're all on my website. Um, so it was a process for sure, and I spent a lot of time on it, and I still felt unprepared when I went into that classroom. So I can't imagine teaching every day. <laughs> yes. Um, so you talked about the different 
um, ways of approaching. Um, I was wondering, in addition to this presentation, was there any information you found that made you believe that um, this was necessary? Like, in, just in terms of find a correlation between preventive or abstinence only or some other type of approach and I did find correlations. I don't have the statistics with me um, right now. Um, a lot of it's in my research paper or on my website. So if you guys are interested in seeing my research, please feel free to go on my website. It's on the BRVGS website. Um, but I did find um, a correlation multiple times between um, the number of unplanned pregnancies, the number of abortions, um, the number of STDs, and the level of education, um, sexuality education in that area. Um, and it was it was correlating that the more was discussed in class, the less that those statistics were, the less those rates were. So it was correlate. It did correlate. And um, if you would like to discuss that with me more after the presentation, I'd be more than happy to show you what I found. Are there any more questions? Great. Thank you, guys.